Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Tonight, from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark cards bring you an unusual true story on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. Here is our distinguished host, Mr. Lionel Barrymore. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Hallmark Hall of Fame, where we tell you true stories about real people. You know, a couple of days back, we celebrated Abraham Lincoln's birthday. However, our story isn't about the great emancipator, but about the woman who helped to make him great, Mrs. Lincoln. Well, they've been telling stories about Mary Todd ever since she married Abe Lincoln. Some of them kind, most of them very unkind. Especially since Billy Herndon, Lincoln's law partner, wrote his biography, most folks have thought of Mary as a shrew, a witch, a harridan. We think it's time to set the record straight. Here, then, is the true story of Mary Todd Lincoln. And we're pleased and proud to have as our star, Miss Jane Wyman. Now, here's Frank Goss. There are Hallmark cards for every day in the year. For every day in the year is made happier by a Hallmark card. Not only the special occasions, anniversaries, birthdays, and holidays, but the Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays of everyday living are made brighter, richer, when you send a Hallmark card. Because a Hallmark card says just what you want to say, the way you want to say it. And on the back is an identifying Hallmark that says, you cared enough to send the very best. Lionel Barrymore appears by arrangement with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, who celebrate their 30th anniversary at your favorite theater with The Long, Long Trailer, starring Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz. And now Mr. Barrymore brings you tonight's exciting story on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. <laughs> Harbor, 1881, morning bright with flags and bunting as a sleek transatlantic liner pulls into the dock after a record-breaking run from lands and light. No one in the cheering crowd or among the ship's reporters or the grinning passengers pays any attention to the frail, gray-haired woman who pushes toward the rail of the promenade deck. Pardon me. Would you please let me through? Pardon me, I, I must see the purser. Let me through, please. Oh, purser. Purser? Yes, ma'am. Hey, you wanted me? Uh, how, how soon do we die? Very shortly, I imagine. Then you must help me. Certainly, ma'am. I want to go ashore first, ahead of the others. Oh, well, I'm sorry, but... It's it... very important. I'm not well, and I have to catch a train as soon as we get to New York. I have to catch the train for Springfield... You understand? Well, yes, ma'am. I'll do what I can. There is quite a crowd down there in the dock. A, a crowd? Sure. Listen to them yell. Why, I believe you're right. <laughs> I, mean, I haven't seen a crowd like this since... Oh, how he enjoyed crowds. And a band, too. Oh, yes, there had to be a band. <laughs> yes, and that song. How nice. I remember it perfectly. Even though it were years ago, I remember I was dancing. I danced very well, you know. And I was pretty, too. At least that night I was very pretty. You're very pretty tonight, Mary. Do you really think so? Of course. You're quite the loveliest young lady at the ball. Oh, you men. <laughs> and um, speaking of men, 
Which of the eligible young bachelors do you wish to meet first? Why, Brother Nenny and I, I don't know what you mean. Nonsense. After all, that's why you're here, isn't it? Certainly not. Oh, I'm quite used to this, Mary. It happens every year. My wife invites one of her sisters out from Lexington. I introduce her to a dashing young blade of the town. They take long walks together, drive me out of the living room while they hold hands in front of the fire, and finally, they marry. Then Elizabeth invites another sister. This winter, your turn has arrived. Oh, really, Minnie, and if you thought... Well, of course, it may be accidental, but it happens every year. <laughs> now, which of the gentlemen would you prefer for the next dance? Oh, well, all right, you win. Elizabeth has mentioned several possible suitors, but I don't know which... But she said something about a Mr. Martin, mm -hmm. and a Mr. Hendricks, and a Mr. Benton. Oh, and a Mr. Douglas. <laughs> oh, Nanny and I, I don't know where to begin. <laughs> I expect you'll conquer them all during the evening, but uh, you'll have to select the first victim yourself. Well, then let's settle for... 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 Mary, what's wrong? What are you staring at? Mary, Mary. Well, Ninian went right on talking, but I couldn't hear a word. The room was suddenly silent. He was leaning against the door, tall, spare, stooping a little, dressed in the most somber black. He wasn't handsome, no. No, not at all handsome, but in this candlelight, his face was made of sharp angles, like a statue carved from wood. And his eyes were alive and burning. It was odd, but my heart leaped out across the floor and went dancing with his eyes. Aren't you listening to me? That young man over by the door, the tall one wearing black. Do you know him, Ninian? Do you? Yes, of course. Then you'll introduce him? No. But why not? Your sister forbade it. She specifically said that you were not to meet him. He isn't on the eligible list. Oh, I see. In fact, Elizabeth doesn't approve of him at all. He's lazy, addicted to telling jokes, has no interest in getting anywhere in the world, and especially not interested in a wife. Personally... I like him. And so shall I, once we've met. Oh, very well. I'll fetch him. Heaven help the man who tries to argue with the tar. Oh, Ninian. Wait. Huh? You haven't told me the gentleman's name. Oh, I haven't I? It's Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln. Well, that has a pleasant sound. Yes, I like the name of Lincoln. <laughs> And a quart of molasses and a side of bacon and a sack of cornmeal. Just put them in the carriage. I'll wait. Hello, Mrs. Perkins. Oh. Lovely day, isn't it? Oh, just like spring, Miss Simpson. Say, I suppose you've heard about Mary Todd. Oh, what about her? Stephen Douglas proposed to her. No. Oh. Yes. And she refused. Again? I do think she ought to settle on someone. She's had the pick of Springfield for the last six months. Well, what you waiting for, eh, Blinken? Oh! <laughs> Come in. Elizabeth, I want to talk to you. Why, of course, Mary. That's what older sisters are for. I'm very unhappy. Oh, nonsense. You're the happiest girl in town. Or at least you should be. You're the most popular. But I... I don't want popularity, Elizabeth. I want... Yes, Mary. I want Mr. Lincoln. Why, Mary! Oh, I know it sounds terribly forward. Oh, it does. But I want him to marry me. Oh, well, I... I'll have to admit that I can't think of any reason you should. But if you want to be Mrs. Lincoln, then be Mrs. Lincoln. But he won't propose. He's been calling on me for months, and, and he won't propose. Hmm. Is he coming to see you tonight? Yes. Then he'll propose tonight. How do you know? Now, Mary, listen to me. When you go downstairs tonight, don't sit on the horsehair sofa. Use the plush couch. And uh, sit on Mr. Lincoln's right. Uh, he is right-handed, isn't he? Uh, why, yes, I believe so. After you're seated, sigh. Then wait a moment and fan yourself as though you felt a little faint. He'll ask if there's anything wrong, and you'll say, no, nothing. Then lower your fan and look into his eyes and say, accept. He'll say, accept what? And you answer, I hate to leave Springfield. Elizabeth, I have no intention of leaving. If you want to marry Mr. Lincoln, you let him think you're leaving. Add that you don't wish to go away. He'll say, 
Then stay. He won't say anything of the kind. He'll just tell me that he's sorry I'm leaving. No matter what he says, you'll reply that you didn't know he felt that way. Really, Elizabeth. And you'll blush and add that you feel the same. Well, I've never heard such... Whatever he says next, you assume to be a proposal. Oh, it's so simple, Mary. Elizabeth Todd Edwards. I've never heard of such mean, petty devi... That must be Mr. Lincoln now, Mary. You'd better go downstairs. But I'm going, but don't you think for a moment that... Say, Elizabeth, should I... I mean, do women... Well, if you love someone... Yes, Mary. You said to sit on his right, didn't you? Miss Simpson, she's finally getting married. It took her long enough to make up her mind. Oh, maybe for Abe to make up his. And I don't see why she wanted him in the first place. He certainly isn't handsome. Never had a steady job. Oh, that marriage won't last, Miss Simpson. Mark my words, it won't last. Well, you know what Mary says. Someday Abe Lincoln will be a great man and we'll look up to him. <laughs> we do already. He's so tall, you can't help looking up at him. <laughs> I, Mary, take thee, Abraham, to be my wedded husband, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, till death do us part. In just a moment, we return to the second act of the Hallmark Hall of Fame. Did you ever think how many ways there are to say happy birthday? I mean by that, you don't wish the same things to a 10-year-old boy on his birthday as you do to his grandmother on her day. You have friends who like to joke about their birthdays, who prefer a buck-up-old-boy type of greeting, while others deeply appreciate an affectionate message. That's why it's so satisfying to choose birthday cards from the wide selection of Hallmark cards for each one has been thoughtfully created to please individual personalities, to be right for different situations and different ages. For example, the Hallmark cards for children's birthdays are designed by artists and writers who know the words and pictures that enter a child's private world of delight. The Hallmark birthday cards for members of your family have that rare combination you look for of deep sentiment expressed simply. And even when you've overlooked someone's birthday, you'll find the Hallmark card so amusing, yet so sincerely apologetic, that your tardy greeting is warmly received. Yes, in every birthday situation, there's a Hallmark card that says just what you want to say, the way you want to say it. And the Hallmark and Crown on the back of the card says, too, that you cared enough to send the very best. And now Lionel Barrymore brings you the second act of our true story of Mary Todd Lincoln. Starring Miss Jane Wyman. Years of crisis for America. Years of growing for Abe Lincoln. He goes to Congress, comes back to Springfield, has some debates with a fellow named Stephen Douglas, the same man Mary Todd passed up marrying. Then Lincoln, somewhat to his own surprise, is nominated for the presidency of the United States. Years of waiting for Mary Todd, 18 years, almost of the day, from her wedding to the night when she stands on the porch of the house in Springfield and knows the waiting's over. Mm, strange that it should rain tonight, Elizabeth. Why strange? It often rains in November. It looks just like the night I married Mr. Lincoln. Same soft rain, same low-hanging black clouds. And yet, there's so many years between that rain and this one. I wonder what's become of them. 
And now, now, oh, Elizabeth, it must come true. He must be elected. He must. Mary, Mary Lincoln. What is it, Mr. Herndon? Tell me. Tell me quickly. Uh, no news yet. Nothing definite. Oh. I just couldn't wait there at headquarters any longer. I've been Abe's law partner for ten years. For months I've lived for this day. Lived for the moment when they'll say that Abe's been elected president. And now that it's that day and that moment, I, I just can't face it. Will he be elected, Mr. Herndon? I don't know, Mrs. Edwards. I just don't know. But I, I, I've got to say this now, and I, I've got to tell you. I don't really know if I want Abe to be elected. Being president's a hard thing, Mary. It can kill a man. I don't know if I want that for Abe. Mr. Herndon, it's what Mr. Lincoln's always hoped for. It's what we all have. Have we? I wonder... What do you mean? Oh, Abe never hoped for the White House, Mary. Never wanted it. You did. Mr. Herndon, I know you've never liked me, but... But I respect you, Mary. Oh, yes, yes. You've done quite a job. Abe was always good and kind, but you put steel in his spine and fire in his voice. You've made Abe reach out for greatness, Mary. What's that? Mr. Herndon, what's happened? Well, I guess they're coming here. Oh, he must have won, Mr. Herndon. Oh, how wonderful. He's won. He's been elected. He's won. Well, Mary, you've taken a man and made him president. May God forgive you. Have you heard that Mary Todd's redecorating the White House again? What? And with her son, Willie, so sick? That's not all. A congressional committee is planning to investigate her as a spy. You don't say. Oh, after all, she is from Kentucky. And Mr. Herndon says she's in constant communication with her sister. Well, I wouldn't have believed it. Mary Todd, a spy. <laughs> Poor Abe. He'll never win the war. Not from his own wife. <laughs> Mrs. Keckley, come here. Yes, ma'am? I must get dressed. It's time for the funeral. I must be dressed. Hurry. Now, Mrs. Lincoln... Don't you understand me? I must go to the funeral. My son's funeral. I must go. Mrs. Lincoln, they buried Willie five days ago. What? Five days ago, Mrs. Lincoln. You know that. Oh. Yes. I'd forgotten again. Why do I always forget the wrong things? Why can't I forget that he's dead? Why, why can't I make him alive by forgetting that he's dead? And you must stop carrying on like this. You have the others to think of. Let my husband think of the others. That's what he spends his life doing, thinking of others. That's all he... Whoever it is, tell him to go away. I expect it's Mr. Lincoln, ma'am. He's been trying to talk to you for days. Won't you see him? No. Miss Lincoln... I do not wish to see my husband. But you're hurting him, ma'am, even more than Willie's death hurt him, and that isn't fair. He hasn't got time for grief. Not now. Oh, he hasn't? No, Mrs. Lincoln. He's got the sorrow of a whole lot of people to shoulder, and that's more important... More than... important than my son? Yes, Mrs. Lincoln. Mrs. Keckley, do you know that you're being very insulting? Oh, I hope not, ma'am. And I won't take it from you, not from my own housekeeper. I'm very sorry. Then you're the only one who's ever been sorry. For two years, I've been insulted by the newspapers, by politicians, by Washington society, by my husband's associates, Mr. Chase, for instance, and Mr. Herndon. Always Mr. Herndon. Oh, you must let gossip... Gossip? Do you know Mr. Lincoln had to appear before a committee of Congress to clear my name? Do you know that when my own brothers were killed in the war, I mustn't shed a tear because they're from the South? And that I, because I had the great misfortune of being born in Kentucky, do you know what they say about me? Mary Lincoln has commerce with the enemy. She's a spy. And they don't just whisper it, Mrs. Keckley. They shout it and print it. And someone has to go through the newspapers and make sure that I don't read what everyone in this country reads and repeats and repeats. And for these people, Mr. Lincoln must shoulder grief. But, Miss Lincoln... Then let Mr. Lincoln bear their grief. And let me bear mine. Latest 
about Mary Lincoln? Oh, can't say that I have, Miss Perkins. Her sister Elizabeth says she's begun going out again. Started to entertain. She's practically well, almost back to normal. <laughs> That's not saying so very much, is it? Oh, now, Miss Simpson, don't be unkind. Mary Todd's one of my oldest and dearest friends. Oh, but well, she's mine, too. Mine, too. And I'm glad she's better. Maybe things will be looking up for everybody now. Oh, maybe so. Now that the war's over. tonight. I think I'll wear something a little brighter. Uh, perhaps green. Well, it's spring and the war's over. And one can't mourn forever. Yes, Mrs. Keckley, the green dress. I'll get it, Miss Lincoln. Oh, I'm so glad you decided to wear it again. Mr. Lincoln and I went for a drive this afternoon out along the Potomac. The trees are in bloom. Such wonderful blossoms. Larger than I've ever seen them before. Here's the dress, Miss Lincoln. Shall I help you? If you please. The president's looking so much better now that he can relax a bit. Oh, yes, but just wait. You'll see how wonderful he can look and how happy he can be. When this term is over, we'll take the honeymoon we never had. We'll travel to Europe and the Holy Land and go to California. And after that, we'll return to Springfield and settle down and grow old together. There. Now, how do I look? Younger and prettier than I've ever seen oh, you. Oh, you stop flattering me. I can see myself in the mirror. Why, Mr. Lincoln, I didn't hear you come in. You walked like a cat. Now, hurry and dress or we'll be late. You know, the curtain's always prompted towards theater. Sir? They're welcoming the ship, ma'am. Welcoming? Oh, oh, no, it isn't possible. Now, ma'am, I fixed it so you can miss the crowd, so if you'll just come with me now. No, they'll be disappointed. I, I can't disappoint the people. Since they haven't forgotten me, I, I won't forget them. Now, lady. It's so nice to be remembered, Purser. So very nice. Thank you, but I don't want to miss the crowd. All right, if you say so, but you'll have to step back out of the way. Out of the way? Yes, indeed. Sarah Bernhardt's on this ship, and that mob may get out of hand when they see her. And now, if you'll just excuse me. Well, it doesn't matter. I don't have much time for other people now. Not anymore. And you can't blame them for forgetting. Even I forget so much these days. But Mr. Lincoln won't have forgotten. And when I find him, wherever... wherever he is... His lips will be laughing, his eyes will be alive and burning, and my heart will leap across the floor and go dancing with his eyes. All right, come on, let's go. I must get through. Let me through, please. I'm in a hurry. I, I have to catch a train. I have an apartment in Springfield. Let me through, please. I'm going to meet my husband. Where's Miss Bernhardt? Bernhardt! Lincoln never completely recovered from the shock of her husband's death. And as sometimes happens in history, her story became lost in a maze of inaccuracies and half-truths. She has sometimes been called the most misunderstood wife in America. Though Mary Todd's life was shadowed by tragedy, we're all in her debt because it was on the ladder of her indomitable will that Abraham Lincoln climbed to greatness. 
Now here's Frank Goss. Do you know what I think is the happiest occasion in the life of any family? It's the arrival of a new baby. It's a day of rejoicing, not only for the proud parents and grandparents, aunts and uncles, but for all the friends, too. That's why there are so many, many people who send Hallmark cards to congratulate the parents and say, Welcome to the new cherub. And I'd suggest that very soon you stop at a fine store where Hallmark cards are featured and select a variety of baby congratulation cards. It's such a good idea to keep them on hand. And you'll be delighted with the new Hallmark selection. Pretty and smart designs, too. All in pinks and blues with bonnets and booties and bows, teddy bears and bunnies, and all the lovable effects of those infant years that pass much too quickly. Believe me, these are cards that parents will cherish. No wonder it's such a pleasant and rewarding custom to send Hallmark baby congratulation cards. And remember, the Hallmark and Crown on the back will say that certainly on this happiest of occasions, you care enough to send the very best. And now here again is Lionel Barrymore. Thank you, Frank. Thank you. It's been a particular pleasure for us tonight to welcome back one of our dearest friends and one of Hollywood's most brilliant actresses, Miss Jane Wyman. Jane, I can't tell you how happy we are to have you back with us on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. It's a pleasure to be here, Mr. Barrymore, and I was happy to play the role of Mary Todd. In bringing her true story before the American people, I think your Hallmark Hall of Fame is doing a great service. In fact, I enjoy all your programs. I always learn something I didn't know. <laughs> well, that's good to hear, Jane. That's very good. Now, now I like to learn something I don't know about you. <laughs> Like, for instance, how many Valentines did you get today, young lady? Why, Mr. B, that would be telling. <laughs> but I'll tell you something, though. They were all Hallmark Valentines. It's fun, isn't it, to have days like this when everyone's so nice? Oh, yeah, sure is, Jane. That's what I like so about Hallmark cards. They make every day you receive one of them seem like Valentine or, or Christmas or, or your birthday. They just make you feel good inside. That's certainly true. Tell me, whose story are you dramatizing next week on the Hallmark Hall of Fame? Next week, Jane, we're remembering an unusual story about the great South American liberator, Simon Bolivar. That sounds exciting, and I'll certainly be sure to listen. Good night, Mr. Barrymore. Good night, everyone. Good night to you, Jane Wyman. And until next week, then, this is Lionel Barrymore saying good night. Here's an important announcement from the makers of Hallmark Cards. Boys and girls of high school age can win big cash prizes for themselves and for their schools in the Hallmark Hall of Fame contest. All you do is nominate a person for the Hallmark Hall of Fame and tell in a brief essay why you chose that person. See the February 3rd issues of Scholastic Magazines for full details on the rules and cash prizes for the Hallmark Hall of Fame contest. Look for Hallmark cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Our producer-director is William Frug. Our script tonight was written by Robert Yale Libet and Frank Burt. Jane Wyman can currently be seen in Warner Brothers' So Big. Featured in our cast were Mary Lansing, Helen Klebe, Paula Winslow, Lillian Randolph, Jack Crucian, William Conrad, and William Johnstone. You are also invited to the Hallmark Hall of Fame on television, every Sunday starring Miss Sarah Churchill. This is Frank Goss, saying goodnight to you until next week at the same time, when we'll present a true story about Simone Bolivar. And in the weeks to come, a true story from the life of Bernard Baruch and the exciting story of Nurse Edith Cavell, starring Miss Helen Hayes, on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. This is the CBS Radio Network. This is KMBC, Kansas City, Missouri.